We are going to look at a classic problem called the assignment problem. The problem is as follows. You are given n persons, say p1 up to pn, n tasks, say t1 up to tn, and the cost of assigning person pi to perform task j is given by cij. The problem is to find an assignment of persons to tasks having minimum cost, such that each person is assigned to exactly one task, and no two persons are assigned the same task. There's a variant of this problem. It takes into account that not everyone can be assigned to each task. For now, we just assume that every person can be assigned to perform each task, and there's a cost for each such pairing. We can solve this problem by brute force. Let me illustrate with a very simple example. Say n equal to 2. Suppose that I have a table listing all the costs. So say P1 assigned to T1 costs 2, say P1 assigned to T2 costs 3, and this costs 1, and this costs 4. So this is a cost table. Now there are only two possibilities. We assign P1 to T1 and P2 to T2. Or we assign P1 to T2 and P2 to T1. This one will give you cost 6, right? Because P1 assigned to T1 costs 2, and P2 assigned to T2 costs 4, so 6. And this one gives you 4. So the minimum cost assignment would be the second one. Now we can do this for n equal to 3. When n is 3, there will be 6 possibilities. And in general, if you try all possibilities for n, you need to go through n factorial possibilities. And n factorial grows pretty quickly. So it might not be a good idea to solve this using brute force. But there's another way to handle this. We can convert this into a minimum cost and capacity flow problem. And the way we do it is as follows. Let me change some colors here. So my persons are red and my tasks are green. And for each person, I'm going to have a node. So P1 up to Pn. And task will be T1 up to Tn. And since every person can be assigned to every task, I'm going to put an arrow between all P's and all T's. So every arc leaves a person and enters a task, and so on. If I have a tj indicating a generic task, it will be right there. And if I have a generic person called pi, it will be right there. And then I have all these arcs, and so on. To formulate this as an incapacitated network flow problem, I need values at the nodes, indicating surpluses and demands. And I'm going to put minus 1 on the tasks, and plus 1 on the persons. And so the arc cost will be, say, C1, 1 here. And in general, it will be Ci, J. I claim that solving the minimum cost flow on this uncapacitated network will solve this assignment problem. And the way to see this is as follows. Suppose I have an assignment. Now I can obtain a flow from an assignment as follows. If pi is assigned to tj, then the arc is set to 1. All other arcs are set to 0. And for example, uh, if p1, say say I'm looking at a 3-person three, three network. Say this is now 1, 2, and 3. Suppose the assignment is P1 to T2, P2 to T1, and P3 to T3. Then I can get a feasible flow by setting this arc to 1, this arc to 1, and this arc to 1. All other arcs to 0. And the cost of this flow is the same as the cost of this assignment. Conversely, let's take a feasible flow whose entries are 0 or 1. Well, since 
only one arc out of each person can be set to one in such a solution, then what we end up with is if we look at all the arcs that have value one, it will give us an assignment. And the cost of that assignment is the same as the cost of the flow. Now the question is whether or not we can always find a minimum cost flow whose entries are zero or one. And the answer is yes, because if you look at the demands and surpluses, they are integers. And we saw in the previous video that if you have integer demands and surpluses, then an optimal extreme point with integer values can be found. So we just need to look for optimal solutions that are extreme points. In such solutions, the entries must be 0 or 1. Because if you look at a person, for example, there are only arcs coming out. And if the values on these arcs must be integers summing to 1, then exactly 1 must be 1, and the rest must be 0. So the question that remains is, how efficient is a network simplex method? Well, in practice, it is quite efficient. And there are ways to turn it into a polynomial time algorithm. 